Hey everyone, welcome to Shots by Engineering. I'm Ahmed, and welcome back to another video in 2D sketching. Um, so in this video, we're going to be drawing something like this, uh, just just sketching 2D sketching something like this. And um, yeah, this is like this is I think the seventh video in the series of 2D sketching. So yeah, and this is the seventh video in 2D sketching. And after we're done with this series, we're gonna move on to, to 3D sketching, 3D 3D modeling, and FE analysis as well in Kedia. So before we move on, move on with the video, I um, I will highly appreciate if you could subscribe to this channel and give me a like if you like this video and drop me a comment or DM me on Instagram if you if you like. So without any further ado we're gonna hop right into the video. Um yep. I'm gonna take this off and not save it. And I'm gonna go to mechanical design, part design, you know, the regular stuff, keep the name as it is. And I'm gonna choose any any the on. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make the construction circles. So that's one construction circle, that's another one, two, three. So we have to make draw three construction circles before we move on. So I'm gonna activate this construction slash standard element, so which is gonna make every element that we make a construction element. It won't be counted as an actual element uh, that we're drawing. So the first radius is gonna be radius or diameter, it's gonna be 93 uh, millimeters in radius. So I'm gonna change that um, to 93. Let's zoom out a bit. And I'm gonna make this circle. And so this is not entirely construction, so we're gonna be using a pop, some parts of it as a construction circle uh, as an actual standard element. So I'm just gonna, for the time being, make it as a construction circle and then convert it to standard element standard element uh, when, we, when we need it. So that is 73 millimeters. And what else? This one. So this is gonna be how much? Seven millimeters in diameter. Seven millimeters in diameter. Okay. Now, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make this shape. I'm gonna use this element, uh, this elongated hole. And oh, wait. Now, first of all, I'm gonna make all of the construction elements. So we have this horizontal axis, the vertical axis, and these 30 degree axis as well. So I'm gonna select the line, make it all reflected with the construction element, and we have making the construction elements. So we got one over here, that's a 30 degree. Axis So now I'm going to make them 30 degrees. I'm going to select the constraint uh, toolbar and I'm going to make the angle between the horizontal and the axis as 30 degrees. Same with this one. I'm gonna make this as 
so this the lab distance between this side and this side is going to be 13 so the half of it is going to be 13 divided by 2 6.5 and I am I'm going to make this side and this side symmetrical about the central axis so I'm going to apply that as well okay yep there you go so we don't really need uh, need to worry about this um, uh, the length of this at the moment. Um, so yeah, one more thing here is we got two more um, um, elongated holes over here. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make some more axes over here and one over here, and these are gonna be 30 degrees from the vertical. So, oops, sorry. So, this is going to be 30. And you're going to see why I'm doing that. 30 degrees, and then this is going to be 30 degrees as well. So, this is, I'm drawing this so that I can make use of the mirror property over here. Uh, so, I can use these as reference elements. So, if I select this, and I can easily mirror the whole thing uh, on the back if I do that. So, over here, right on the axis. Uh, so, so that I'm doing this so that I don't have to draw uh, the whole thing again. It just makes my life easier. So, I'm going to mirror this uh, with reference to this axis. And then there we have it. So I don't have to draw on that again. Okay. So with that out of the way, I'm gonna yeah. So I'm gonna make uh, this as a standard element and I'm gonna zoom in a bit. So okay, one more thing is now we have to draw this arc, and the center of this arc is over here uh, at 30 degrees. So this is the axis that I just drew this one, and this is the point where the center of the circle lies. So I need this point here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the intersection point. So I'm gonna, and I'm going to select the two elements that I need the intersection point from. So the first one is this, and the next one is this one. Oops, sorry. There you go. So now we have an intersection point here, and I'm going to make it as a construction element, construction point. There you go. So now I'm going to make a circle right from this point, which is going to be a regular. Let me keep this point. So yeah, uh, and I'm going to make the circle with the radius of 32. Radius, make 32. Yeah. And if you see here, everything's in between the That has to be vertical and or parallel to this axis. So I'm going to select both of these elements and I'm going to make it parallel. Okay. Why does it still move? Okay. Uh, so the distance between these two is 13, obviously. So I'm going to constrain it that way. 13. There you go. Why is this 
still not really constrained. Okay, I'll just make them pause. Okay, so now we have the, okay, yeah, uh, so I'm gonna remove some parts of these elongated holes that we don't need over here. Just removing it using the grid cut. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll just make these two perpendicular, or uh, parallel. Okay. And this is all parallel. Okay. Now these are fully constrained. And uh, what else do we need? Yeah, so we need one more circle from here up to here. And there you go. And I'm going to make it a standard element with a radius of 32. Yep. And I'm going to remove some parts of this arc as well. Copy this arc on the other side mm, with reference to the central axis. Then remove these parts, and yeah, we have it. So yeah, now we have like half of it ready. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm now gonna draw this whole thing again on the other side. Um, um, but I'm gonna use this axis and I'm gonna mirror all of this on the other side here. So I'm going to remove all of this again, pause, okay. so I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to mirror it on the other side using this mirror property with reference to the central uh, axis. So I'm going to copy all of this here, select the mirror property and select the horizontal axis so that can be copied on the other side. Okay. okay, so now we have everything ready pretty much, but we do still need these two circles here, circular slots. So the first circle has a radius of 45 units, 45 meters, millimeters. Diameter, sorry. And then we have one more circle, just like a slot here. Um, and it has a why is it constrained? Mm -hmm. Make it again. And it has a diameter of 45 meters. And then we have this slot here with a 212 uh, height, 2.2 meter height, and 65 meters in uh, width. Make a small circle, rectangular, rectangle, and it can lie here. And it's gonna be symmetrical about the central axis. We're gonna do that. There you go. And then the le height of this circle is gonna be. Um, wait. I'm gonna zoom in. And then I'm going to make a point here, an uh, intersection point between this side, this line, and the circle. So we have this point. I'm going to make it as a constraint circle. And I'm going to duplicate this point or that side using the mirror property. So mirror, there you go. And then we have, yeah, we have this point here as well. So the distance between this point and so the distance between this point and the top of it is very And
So that's all for today, and I'll catch you.